Modern Warfare 2 launched with quite a few missing features. The Callisto Protocol was cancelled in Japan, Xbox Game Pass is probably getting more expensive and much more on This Week in Gaming. Hey guys, Level Cap here. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's launch is shaping up to be yet another divisive first day in the franchise's history. Players are frustrated by a laundry list of missing features, including hardcore mode, leaderboards, stat tracking barracks, the ability to save custom blueprints, and more. Xbox players and PC players can't disable crossplay either. In general, it does seem like the game is delivering most of the core Call of Duty components, just with some key quality of life features missing, plus some bugs. Now, before I get into the rest, of this story, I've got a quick word from today's sponsor. I am totally addicted to a fantastic new card game. Ben Brode, the creator of Hearthstone, has just released his brand new game, Marvel Snap. It's Marvel cards collecting, upgrading, and battling your own custom crafted decks. It's free to play, there's no pay to win mechanics, all of the cards are gained by actually playing the game, and there's tons of new mechanics that evolve the traditional collectible card game. Now, Marvel Snap is a 1v1 with six fairly fast paced turns. In the middle of the board are three location cards, which have modifiers that can change between matches, and you play your cards next to these to overpower your opponent. At the end of a round, you have to control at least two of the three locations to win. Simple on the surface, but the strategy evolves quickly as you unlock new cards. The coolest aspect of the game is the snap mechanic, where you can choose to up the ante of a round. Cosmic cubes are anteed up each time you play, and if you lose your cubes, you'll go down in rank. But during the round, you can snap to double the ante. If your opponent isn't feeling confident they may retreat to minimize their losses, but this can also be used as a bluff. It's kind of like poker meets speed chess meets collectible cards all wrapped up in the Marvel Universe with tons of style choices and customization options. I am fully on board and already theory crafting new decks. I used to collect Marvel cards as a kid and I have a long history of playing collectible card games so this is absolutely my jam. I can't recommend it enough. Check the link in the video description, it's on mobile and Steam. Plus your account is shared across devices so your collection and progress goes with you regardless of where you play. So check it out now, again the link is in the video description. Alright, getting back to the launch status of Modern Warfare 2. Overall, it seems like the M4 is dominating the early game progression meta. There appears to be some frustration surrounding the exclusive content on the PlayStation for Modern Warfare 2. Those players get an exclusive battle pass bundle, additional double XP events, free in-game bundles, bonus XP for being in a party with other PlayStation players, and two additional loadout slots. If you've been playing Modern Warfare 2, share your thoughts in the comments. Now, as for the game's post-launch content, it looks like Modern Warfare 2's story will continue via Spec Ops Raids. This is the game's co-op mode and will serve as the platform for future narrative content. Infinity War did something similar for Modern Warfare 2019 with Warzone's seasonal updates. Each season added new cutscenes, easter eggs, and other changes that continue the game's narrative. Modern Warfare 2's first raid goes live in December. In our final bit of Modern Warfare 2 news, players discovered the game's disc only has 70 megabytes of data stored on it. If you're on a limited internet connection, it'll be an absolute nightmare when you try to install the game since it's roughly 100 gigabytes. Upcoming horror title, The Callisto Protocol, has been cancelled in Japan. The country's rating board refused to approve the game without key changes being made. The developers refused to make those changes because it would undermine the experience. Early reviews and previews of Callisto call it a very graphic and violent title that lives up to the hype of being a Dead Space spiritual successor while standing out as a unique experience. Former developers from Dead Space, including its creator Glenn Schofield, developed The Callisto Protocol. Schofield is serving as the head of the project, but his recent comments praising the studio's crunch culture drew heavy scrutiny from other developers and fans. It's unclear how Japanese players will access Callisto now. Hopefully, it'll have a Japanese language option available in all regions. Earlier this week, we reported on a former Call of Duty developer discussing skill-based matchmaking. He felt that the matchmaking system hurt the experience for players and was pushed on the developers by the people at the top of Infinity Ward or Activision. As a bit of a follow-up, the developer is currently working on Ubisoft's competitive FPS X Defiant, and they just officially announced the game won't use SBMM in casual matchmaking. Casual matches will be balanced with a hidden matchmaking system to ensure fair teams. Ranked matches will be based on your rank and likely utilize SBMM to ensure even competition between all players. X Defiant is getting a crossplay insider test period in January. 
Data miner Temporial revealed new vault weapons hidden in Battlefield 2042's files. The AN-94, SPAS-12, and M-98B seem like they'll be released in a future update. The M-98B had already been announced by DICE, which means Temporial's findings are likely accurate. Unfortunately, most of the vault weapons so far pale in comparison to the regular roster of guns. They lack the advanced attachments and base stats to compete with other base game weapons. However, one of the standouts has been the Gold Magnum Sniper Rifle. It has a super fast ADS speed and decent enough damage to make it a standout aggressive weapon. Hopefully DICE can get the M98B right as well. In official 2042 news, DICE have disabled the dust shield headgear for McKay as they continue working on the performance and crashing issues plaguing the game since update 2.2 launched. Progress towards Star Citizen Gen 12 render sounds promising. The developers gave us a progress update this week. They're essentially redoing the entire rendering engine of the game to utilize the Vulkan API. This will eventually enable support for features like AI upscaling, aka DLSS, ray tracing, Linux support, VR performance, and much more. The devs are nearly done porting all the game's existing features and assets to the new render, and it could potentially debut with the Alpha 3.18 update. This version of Gen 12 is the basic implementation, and development, refinement, and added features will continue for years to come. As new patches roll out, game performance should improve massively just don't expect an overnight improvement when 3.18 launches. In other Star Citizen news, the developers just announced the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo 2952. This is an annual in-game event that gives players a preview of upcoming ships and also unlocks tons of ships for players to try out and buy. It starts on November 18th and ends on November 30th. Each day of the event will feature different ship manufacturers. The teaser trailer also potentially has some hints at some new ships that may be announced. Next. Gotham Knights' first post-launch update fixed some specific issues, but wasn't anything to get excited about. The good news is the developers are working on some major performance improvements for a future update. The game currently suffers from extreme stutter caused by the shader compilation and poor CPU utilization, bottlenecking performance on all platforms. It's tough to say how much of an improvement the developers can actually make. It seems like the insane value of the Xbox Game Pass may not last forever. During Microsoft's latest earning call, Xbox head Phil Spencer revealed that they'll have to raise the price of their hardware and subscription services at some point. He doesn't expect the price hikes to happen before this holiday season. Spencer previously said the Xbox Series X and S would stay at their current prices, so by hardware he might mean controllers and other peripherals. But if the cost of Xbox Game Pass starts climbing, it could put a significant dent in people's near universal praise of the service. Microsoft announced that the Xbox brand made more money in the past three months than it ever Ever has in the first quarter fiscal period. The problem, however, is that Game Pass has missed its growth targets for the last two years. Microsoft targeted 73% growth for the service over the previous year, but only managed 28%. And so while it might seem like Microsoft is making more money than ever and raising prices on players, who knows what the actual investment of doing Xbox Game Pass has been. Third party testing by Igor's lab has potentially identified the cause of the RTX 4090 power connectors melting. Images of the melted connectors flooded social media this week. The issue seems to be stress on the connectors caused by PC case side panels since the card is so wide. However, Eager's lab believes the problem is isolated to the construction of NVIDIA's 12-pin to 4-plug SATA adapter. The wires that supply the bulk of the connector's power are split across multiple pins with a solder plate and joint. This connection is very fragile, so if it gets stressed too much, the split breaks, sending the combined power of all six pins through just four, which melts the connector. The good news is the issue only affects NVIDIA's adapter and isn't a general issue with the 12-pin power connector. So you should be fine if your power supply actually has a native 12-pin cable. NVIDIA are investigating the problem and should hopefully be sending replacement parts and offering repairs to address what Eager's lab discovered. The new character being added for Season 15 of Apex Legends had her abilities revealed in a new gameplay trailer. Catalyst Passive is called Barricade and lets her reinforce up to two doorways at once. Once reinforced, enemies will have to do extra damage to break through them. Her tactical is called Piercing Spikes, and it's essentially a trap that covers the ground and deals massive damage to anyone standing on it. Finally, her ultimate is called Dark Veil. It's a wall that blinds players if they walk through it and blocks enemy scans. Season 15 launches on November 1st and includes the new map Broken Moon. 
Before we get to the next story, I just want to say thanks so much for tuning in. It's been a pretty interesting week for gaming news, and we're curious to hear what story stood out to you. Let us know in the comments, and while you're there, please consider subscribing or even becoming a channel member to support what we do here. As always, any and all contribution is greatly appreciated. Rainbow Six Siege just hit 85 million lifetime players. Ubisoft says revenue is continuing to climb as well. It's up 18% year over year and is going on its seventh year of post-launch support. Siege's success was unexpected given the state it initially launched in. At the time, Siege's PvP focus and lack of interactive AI immediately put off the franchise's hardcore fan base. New players of the franchise were also frustrated by imbalanced operator mechanics, bugs, and the game's general lack of polish. But the devs put in a monumental effort to get the game up to par, and while it hasn't revived the tactical PvE elements of past titles, it's far exceeded the expectations in pretty much every other regard. Now, if you're looking for a deeper dive into the Modern Warfare 2 launch, check out my first impressions video here. I launched it yesterday. Also, check out this GTFO video that I recorded with Karma Cut. GTFO is such a fantastic game. If you're looking for some good four-player co-op FPS action, it's a fantastic title, and certainly scary if you're looking for something to do on Halloween. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.